scripture. That's why the Old Testament, at least some of it, sounds so far off and far-fetched and like a fairy tale because basically what happened in Exodus and Genesis did in fact happen, but what you're reading in, in, the, in the Old Testament is the dream form of it. So the words, the nouns and the verbs, they mean something different, something totally different altogether. If you can understand what each word means, then you can, you can decipher, you can decode the, not only the Bible, but because this thing always thinks the same, that language carries on to this present day in our dreams. So someone dreams about, uh, let's say, they're eating their fingers, right? That means a certain thing. Right? Eating means something, fingers mean something. So when we have that dream, we say, oh, this is coming up. Someone on the other end of the world or somewhere dreams about themselves eating their fingers, we can say, that means this. In a vague way, this is going to happen to you. Again, it's the Lord pre-planning and pre-fitting everything. So very few come to know this secret language. And it's forbidden knowledge. So we can't go and teach people this knowledge, although we can give spiritual advice. And from time to time, we attempt to learn about a person and how they can be helped and how we can give advice by their dreams because that basically is God thinking about them. So do you think sometimes you have a dream perhaps it's, it's almost a warning that you can do something to stop something bad from happening or we can perhaps accelerate something good uh, to happen to us? Everything happens for a reason. Even the bad things happen for a reason. Sometimes we have dreams and we know bad things are going to happen, but we still get out of our tent in the morning and we go about our day because we know from that experience we will learn, we will grow spiritually, and we will be better processors of negative energy, which is ultimately all that is concerned with. Just to get more mentally ready, perhaps. Perhaps it's also sending secret instructions to the subconscious. Well, if you can tap into that, you can you could learn what it's trying to tell you. But of course, people sometimes go about their day-to-day -day business and they're following instructions that have already been secretly given to them at nighttime and they don't even know it. Oh, so we can see and comprehend these hidden instructions when we remember our dreams. And for me anyways, the more, the more of a crisis I experience in my life, the more uh, anxiety or stress that I feel, the more I remember my dreams, so that leads me to the conclusion that the more we suffer, the bit closer to yourself, the closer we get, yes, to the Lord and to ourselves. So the more suffering we do, the better off we are spiritually. And of course, the Lord does appreciate it when we give ourselves to, to that suffering, to that obedience, no matter what it may be, praying five times a day, going to church even, giving to a beggar or whatever it may be, he appreciates every little aspect of our life where we choose to sacrifice something, whether it even it be something insignificant as our time, it's all greatly appreciated and taken down. Of course, all our aggressive thoughts as well is all taken down. So absolutely everything is recorded and that's what it's doing in our dreams. And in our dreams, we can even see what other people are thinking about us in the future. That's how bizarre it all may sound to some people, I'm sure, but it knows what we're going to be thinking and other people are going to be thinking in the future, and you could learn that from your dreams. Uh, do you have any advice for homeless people that have been homeless, not because of their choice, but because of the circumstances? Like I, I heard once to say, if you are hungry, pretend you're fasting, and at least try to bring the meaning to your pain and suffering. Do you have any suggestion or any kind of, um, perhaps, tip for them to although they, have, they are going through a very uh, difficult moment of their life, just to get a little more gain from their pain? Of course, trying not to drag other people down with them, trying not to burden their frustration upon other people, although spiritually it may, it may seem rewarding to them at the time. Of course, there are many different ways a person can handle it. Uh, being homeless is is part of the tribulation that some people face and some people give themselves to. 
to reach redemption. It's the healing program for some people. So the more they stay away from drugs and self-gratification and perhaps focus on others or themselves, the more they will spiritually profit themselves. It, it all depends, it all comes down to how, how well they handle it. You know, if they're freaking out and yelling at people, which we see for, Way off, yeah. or, you know, dragging people down and into the pit along with them, or trying to corrupt others, and, you know, these things are all taken account of. But we've met some quite righteous people on the streets, people who uh, are ready to hear the truth, people who are open-minded and tolerant and compassionate, people who have, you know, still even smoke crack, right? But of course, uh, they've managed to somehow gain a certain amount of virtue and conscience where they can discuss spiritual things with us and actually make sense and sound reasonable while other people, you know, they may hear voices or have mental issues or whatever it may be, but, you know, most of them anyway, for the most part, are, uh, they're on the train to salvation or redemption depending upon how they handle it. Maybe any last few words for our younger uh, audiences, for teenagers, uh, and you want to convey just to yes, bring some light to your life. And again, thank you, Brother Ray. Oh, my, my, my absolute to pleasure. To well, thank you very much. Protect your life. Protect your virtue. Don't go out there. I'm sure your friends are going to want to drag you out and go to parties and drink and take all sorts of weird and offensive drugs, but control yourself. Self-control is an actual virtue. And those are the things that you should be focused on. Sure, you can be happy from time to time. That's, of course, acceptable. But don't give yourself into debauchery over excess or extreme amounts of self-gratification. The more you don't fit into the world, the more you don't fit into popular society, the better you're off you are going to be spiritually down the road. So do not seek that which is material. Do not seek fame or fortune, control or power. Seek humility and servitude. And yes, even from time to time, live the boring life. And focus on others and the needs of others. And just try to be as compassionate and caring and tolerant and forgiving as you possibly can. And loving, of course. Yeah, anyway, God bless you. Yeah, God you. bless you. Thank you. And God bless you all.